Hi everyone, my name is Brian and I'm the 3D Print Creator. In this episode I'm going to show you how your prints can benefit from cooling. And if you happen to be a DaVinci Pro user, then I have a surprise for you because I have the cooling fan and all the files to make it yourself also on Thingiverse. So let's get started. Hey, there you are. So, when you're printing with PLA, you can print very easy. PLA is a very forgiving material and it's very easy to print with. But when you're printing on higher speeds, and especially when you're printing bridges and overhangings, like for example in a tree frog, then it's a very difficult material because, well, overhangings are difficult to print. So, those bridges are very, very difficult. They are a lot easier when your material will cool down faster. So one of the things you can do to make it cool down is place a fan in your machine. A whole lot of people are placing fans here in the sides. And if you place a fan there then everything in the machine will be cooled and also your hot end will get cooled and your bed will get cooled. So uh, you, have, you need longer times to get everything on the right temperature to print. But it does work. When you're cooling exactly at the place where you have to cool, then it goes a whole, be a whole lot better. And this is what I've been trying for a long time now with uh, lots of experiments. The first thing I made was this fan duct and this consists of a few parts uh, which had to be glued together. So this is why you see all those glue here. And uh, well, this part actually wasn't so good because the opening was too small for a 40 millimeter fan to blow the air uh, through. So this one fell off. And then came this one. This one has a bigger opening. Uh, also on the inside here, uh, everything is rounded much more, uh, yeah, much more uh, sophisticated so that the air can flow in a constant uh, yeah, movement and uh, when I created this I was really happy with it because a lot of air is flowing out. Uh, the only downside of this thing is that it weighs too much. So when this is hanging on your carriage then your carriage starts to, to uh, wiggle and uh, you don't want that while printing. And uh, you won't notice that if you're printing slowly but if you're printing faster, like for example uh, 40, 50 or even 60 millimeters a second, what I do a lot, then uh, this thing makes the carriage too heavy and it starts to wobble every time the carriage has to stop. So uh, it comes to an end, it has to stop and then it starts to wobble. So this thing was too heavy, but it worked very, very good. So then I was thinking, what can I do to have a, a uh, well, a fan duct which weighs less, but which does the same job. And then I came on another type of fans. Those are also 40 millimeter fans, but this one is an exhaust fan. And an exhaust fan is a fan that has a directional output. So I printed uh, a few different uh, holders so I can uh, hold the exhaust fan in place. And I found out that a double holder like this is, was the best way to keep it in place. So I tried it and this one was mounted on the top of my carriage and it was blowing the air underneath. So it blows the air right to the nozzle of my printer. And it proved to work very, very good. But only on the uh, slower speeds, slower printing speeds. And the reason is, this is very directional. And when the carriage is moving around very fast, then when it lays down its layer of plastic here and it moves around, it doesn't cool that plastic anymore. So I had to have a bigger airflow. And uh, well, first I was thinking of widening this nozzle. But the second thing that came to my mind was, well, if I have two of those. So that's what I made. Take a look. So with two instead of one uh, of those fan ducts, uh, the airflow will be wider 
and also it will blow besides the nozzle. And because it blows besides the nozzle, it's very easy to cool your filament right at the point where you want to cool it. You don't want to cool it exactly on the nozzle, you want to cool it just besides it. What your nozzle is going from, from left to right and from right to left, and then you want to cool somewhere in between it. So this was the, the best way I could think of to cool my filament. And it proves to be very good because I've been printing those very difficult tree frogs. Take a look. So when printing the first tree frog, I had the cooling switched on. And uh, at first I thought, well, it, it was a bit, a bit wobbly on the, the belly. Uh, but then I saw that when the print came out, it came out very nice. And here you can see the print, and it came out really, really nice. So here you see it. Then I made a second tree frog. And well, the second tree frog, you can see it print here, it didn't came out that nice. And the reason, very simple, was there was no cooling. Because uh, in this second print, I did everything the same, all the settings are the same, only the cooling was turned off. So let's see a side-by-side -side comparison of those two tree frogs. And here you can see there is a big difference between working with and without the cooling. So as you can see, cooling for PLA is very, very good. I don't know if this cooling uh, would also apply to ABS, because in ABS the problem is quite often that it cools too fast. But when working with PLA, well, it's very good to cool it because you don't have a problem with the cooling. Also, when you print this design from Tingy first, because the design is linked in the description down below, then uh, you have to print two of those. Those are the holders for your fans. And uh, I also link to the fans on eBay where you can buy them. Uh, it has to be five fault fans. Make sure you, you buy the five fault fans. Uh, and well, here they are. If you print this, the file is like this. But I do, didn't do it myself on this way. I printed it on its side. Because when you print it on its side, the print will be way better. Uh, you have to, to use some support inside, but the prints are way better. So print it on its side with support. And also print the backplate, because you need the backplate to mount it on. Then when printed, mount two of those to the backplate. Uh, use some super glue for that. And also uh, when you've printed it, uh, mount the fans inside and wire those fans with uh, f the, all the grounds together, uh, also the ground of the LED, uh, which has to go to the ground. Then use the 5 volt plus, but use a switch to connect it. And make sure to have a 220 ohms resistor between the LED, which has to be a red LED if you're going to use 220 ohms and uh, the resistor and in this design the hole is three millimeters so if you use a three millimeters LED you'll be fine. So this is it. If you're not so handy with electricity and with tinkering on your printer then give this design a spare power supply. Use another power supply than the supply of your printer. That said, uh, I didn't do that. I used the power supply of the printer. I took the 5 volt out and brought it up to the nozzle because with the 5 volt there I can print. So uh, I used the 5 volt of the power supply which is inside the printer. But if you don't know what you're doing, give it its own power supply because I'm not responsible if you make a mistake and you blow up your printer. Also make sure that every wire you solder there uh, is very very good insulated so that you won't have a problem of making a shortage because when you do so your whole machine will be defective so make sure you do it right. I hope you have a lot of very very nice prints with it. Um, well if you like this video then please give it a thumbs up also subscribe to my channel I need more subscribers because uh, I need to grow I really really need to grow with this channel so please subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you next week because every Thursday there is a new episode 
of this video series. Thanks a lot for watching and a lot of nice prints.